Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's webinar on home-based diagnostics. Today, we're very delighted to share with you a very hot topic, home-based diagnostics in COVID-19, because this is very important as we step into this era of new normal, as we probably have to adapt ourselves to the situation of um, a ba daily based um, COVID-19 uh, prevention and control, we have to be aware that there should be smarter or more convenient ways or efficient ways to control uh, the pandemic um, in a home setting. So today we're very delighted to have with us three prominent speakers uh, who each will share their perspectives and on insights on this uh, on this issue from their own uh, angle. We have with us Dr. Henry Lee and uh, Dr. Karen Khan and also Mr. Lin Pong Sen. Uh, Dr. Lee, if I can use a few minutes to introduce, Dr. Lee is a board uh, certified in allergy and immunology, immunology, and he's also a part-time instructor of medicine at the Johns Hopkins University since 2001. He received his PhD in medical biology and immunology at the University of Texas um, Medical Branch at Galveston, Texas. And also we have with us two prominent um, industry players, Roche Diagnostics and uh, Wolfo, who joined APEC Med uh, since uh, May. So it's quite new member in APEC Med. So today we're very delighted to ha have uh, this opportunity to share with you this session from also a member perspective on how do we look at uh, home use uh, diagnostics in a regional perspective. After hearing the presentations of the three prominent speakers, we will have an opportunity to engage them with a short panel discussion. And then perhaps we will have an opportunity to also take questions from the floor, from the chat box, if you're uh, okay to leave your questions or comments in the chat box as well. So without further ado, I'll first invite uh, Dr. Henry Lee just now, I very briefly introduce uh, Dr. Henry Lee. I should also mention that he holds many fancy titles, I have to say. He's currently a fellow of the American Academy of Asthma, Aller Aller Allergy, and Immunology, and the American College of uh, uh, Asthma, Allergy, and Immunology. He's also a member of the European College of Asthma, Allergy, and Immunology. He also serves as an executive board member of the Chinese American Medical Society, Mid-Atlantic Chapter. I'll now just stop here. I'll pass the floor to Dr. Lee for the very high level presentation. Thank you very much. It's a very generous introduction. I'm happy to share uh, some of um, uh, the topics, uh, you know, um, we have been uh, discussing among our, ourselves. I think what I, my presentation is primarily talking about from the US perspective. And uh, so let's see here. The, um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, you know, we've been working with uh, the uh, COVID situation um, uh, for a little um, over a year uh, right now, since um, the, um, the beginning of 2020 uh, here in US, we started to have uh, <clears throat> uh, fund the cases and start the testing programs and uh, and uh, now the the testing has been evolving and uh, around the world and of course uh, uh, situation has um, changed quite a bit for everybody and uh, disclosure I uh, did have um, a compensation uh, city the research project with one full but uh, all my other engagement are not related to today's um, presentation. <clears throat> So the diagnosis of uh, COVID and everybody know it's a nucleotide basis uh, considered gold standard and antigen tests, uh, it's uh, something it's uh, uh, emerging and uh, play a more and more uh, significant role and uh, antibody testing and uh, especially the nowadays it's um, uh, semi-quantitative. In fact, uh, US just approved one uh, quantitative um, uh, antibody testing. And so that's the target we are uh, we use to assess the, both for the diagnosis and also the immunity. And uh, but um, um, whether we are able to use any of those methods in at home is uh, uh, primarily related to the complexity for the testing, the method, 
and uh, and uh, home-based medicine, uh, the testing obviously has to be uh, simple and straightforward. And of course, the advantage of uh, home testing, probably everybody already know it's a, a simple, fast, and the people can get a result right away. And uh, in general, the costs um, uh, tend to be uh, lower if you consider the time you have to go to uh, spend to go to uh, make appointment to see a doctor, go to a clinic or even hospital. And um, so it's a basically, um, it's a <clears throat> potentially much more uh, a quicker way to get a result. And uh, the accuracy, both from the sensitivity and the specificity standpoint of the, the fast testing and it's in rapid testing in, in, in many area has approaching the gold standard. So of course, this is um, looks like a busy uh, slide. It's a, just to give everybody a, a, a general idea, you know, as asymptomatic, mild moderate uh, patients as well as the severe patients. And the uh, different uh, patients actually, when you look at the the various um, expression in the body is actually quite different. This is a, just a schematic, uh, per, per, probably everybody already know. I don't want to go to detail and uh, to this. Um, essentially, we uh, keep in mind uh, it's uh, the spike protein and the M protein happen to be um, two major protein. We, we use uh, both for nucleic acid detection antigen testing as well as um, for antibody testing. Those are structural protein uh, and uh, as well as uh, the component very important in identifying the virus to make the diagnosis and the e even uh, predict the e future immunity. <clears throat> of course, uh, this is um, a clinical per uh, classification, asymptomatic, and uh, the variation is uh, tremendous, asymptomatic. And uh, of course, a certain study said it uh, can be uh, up to 80% of um, affected patients can be asymptomatic. It's uh, somewhat uh, relevant in, um, in home testing in the first batch um, of uh, FDA, EOA, uh, all the approved home testing, in fact, was for symptomatic patients. And um, uh, only recently, it's a uh, start to be uh, more relaxed. They start to be introducing uh, or relax the regulation. The testing can be used for asymptomatic as well as for screening purpose, which can be quite a significant and uh, in a uh, in, uh, general public, uh, you know, if, remove those restrictions. So, um, and of course, uh, for if we're talking about home testing and uh, in my understanding is the home testing, you get a result um, when you do the testing uh, immediately yourself as considered home testing. Uh, those um, uh, home collection kits or and uh, the package, they send you a kit, you, you do the swabbing and then you send the uh, uh, mail it back to a particular lab. And that's uh, strictly speaking, not a considered a comprehensive home testing. I think it's not a, something we are going to cover. We are going to cover primarily those, you get a result right away and uh, usually within an hour. And uh, so 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes is typical for antigen and for uh, nucleic acid detection can be uh, longer, uh, usually uh, longer time. And antibody so far, there are not, not just, not a lot of demand uh, or approval in US uh, to get antibody testing at home. So of course, uh, antigen uh, testing, and uh, one of the concept is uh, right now we uh, usually want to say is uh, antigen testing right now is getting better and better, but uh, still the nucleic acid based uh, testing is uh, slightly more sensitive. Um, so that's uh, the time frame, and uh, so 
Right now, when uh, when we look at the US uh, uh, FDA EOA, we find that the antigen, uh, as uh, my slide indicated, are eight products has been approved, uh, the EOA. Um, uh, and uh, so they are all LFA uh, based uh, lateral flow and uh, seven of them, they do not need any instrument. So, so that's uh, the Illum is from Australia or the other three, uh, other three company, uh, seven products are US and actually uh, representing a different stage of their approval. So this is an age indication and um, OTC is over the counter, you don't need a prescription and the RX is a prescription only. So, um, and uh, you, you can see um, all the three uh, US company has a prescription version versus OTC version. And I think it's a more uh, tailored toward the US uh, special situation because of uh, OTC uh, over the counter uh, without a, a requirement for prescription, then you, uh, your insurance will not cover. So, so that's the only reason <clears throat> they have a prescription uh, only uh, version. Uh, you, you, if you look at them, the packaging pretty much the same. And the uh, approval time is almost identical. They, they submit a different version. You, you can see the, the um, uh, correct characteristics, the clinical study, uh, all the numbers are, are matching to each other. So they are not exactly uh, different uh, tests. It's just a different kind of approval. It's more uh, uh, working uh, with uh, the US special healthcare reimbursement uh, kind of uh, schedule, so to speak. So that, that's uh, the approval dates. And uh, of course, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the oral shore is the latest one, uh, just a, a month ago. And uh, so basically in US, this um, uh, testing kits, uh, um, Banex is uh, available in major uh, pharmacy chain like CVS, Walgreens, and uh, even the uh, Walmart. Uh, you can get it either online or in store. And uh, Illum is, is the same. And the quick, quick view is a slightly uh, less uh, widespread distribution. The Orosure has not uh, fully or you know, easily available yet. But the uh, Binax has been around for, long, for the longest time. And uh, talk, of course, uh, we, we talk about the potential slightly limitation for the anti antigen, uh, but um, I will briefly mention the nucleic acid. They also have three of the acid by two company. And uh, so this is a nucleic acid base. And uh, one, the, the latest one, uh, April, uh, that product is actually is uh, uh, RT uh, lamp. So basically pretty sensitive and uh, very uh, comparable for the gold standard 30 minutes get the result and a very uh, straightforward and uh, almost comparable to the antigen test. So, so <clears throat> this is a summary slides. And uh, so uh, usually it's pretty quick and uh, the uh, positive and the negative percentage agreement are very, very uh, uh, appealing. And uh, so basically, and uh, what a potential limitation here in US is just, especially in our area, it's a very um, significant proportion of people are fully vaccinated. At this, um, when you are a uh, high, high percentage of people vaccinated, the demand for this testing seems to be less. But um, again, we do have uh, the school, the, com the big company cooperation, and they, they do see the value of a quick uh, testing uh, for their uh, employee and also for the student. So that's uh, uh, basically what, um, this is my team. And I, I know I, we don't have a lot of time. I don't want to uh, waste everybody's time. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions later on.
Thank you, Dr. Henry Lee. Just now you have given us a very high level introduction to home-based diagnostics. You have rightly introduced advantages of using home-based diagnostics and the different testing options. Uh, before that. And also you have very kindly introduced approval status in the United States and shared us with us the US practice. Thank you very much for that. I think we have learned a lot and actually this has set the tone for today's discussion. So um, again, thank you for the perspective um, uh, the perspective of from the academic way. Now we have an opportunity to engage the two prominent industry speakers from both Rush Diagnostics and Wolfo. So first of all, let me pass the floor to Mr. Lee Pong So. Uh, Lee Pong So, I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, Mr. Lee is actually now is the business leader uh, of the point of care solutions at Rush Diagnostics. Uh, throughout his career, I have to say that Pong Sen has accumulated vast experiences in various different uh, segments for centralized laboratory reagents. He was also leading the bio industry business, uh, which includes both biopharmaceuticals uh, manufacturing and in vitro diagnostics assay development. He has also um, had a very good insight of the developing needs and market trends on technologies among the diagnostics manufacturing community across the Asia Pacific region. Actually, before this um, meeting, we have shared some of his understanding of the different uh, scenarios across the Asia Pacific region. So I'll be very happy to have him with us to share that learnings. And without further ado, I'll pass the floor to Mr. Lee. Now, Mr. Lee, you have the floor to start. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction, Alicia. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Singh from Rush Diagnostics. Um, in the next 10 minutes, uh, I will actually talk about the role of uh, COVID-19 home care testing uh, in the new normal, right? And in this 10 minutes, I will cover uh, what does the various different um, international organizations such as WHO or CDC uh, says about the importance of home-based uh, rapid antigen tests. I will also cover what are the considerations that are needed uh, for the various different home-based testing for them to be effective and efficient. And lastly, I will then share a little bit about the various um, regulatory landscape environment across uh, Asia Pacific uh, that's really different in various different markets. So jumping straight in, um, I believe you can see my screen. And uh, basically back in March 2020, the WHO basically declared COVID-19 as a global pandemic. And since then, all our lives has really been affected. Uh, there are new uh, lifestyles that we have to take on. For example, we uh, begin to work from home more regularly. Uh, there is basically uh, international travel restrictions in, uh, across every country, uh, closures of schools, workplaces, restaurants, um, and other public places are actually uh, happening everywhere. And this is uh, what I would call a new normal that uh, we need to uh, learn to adapt and, and live in. Um, this new normal as defined by uh, the World Health Organization uh, basically advises everyone to avoid uh, the three Cs. And this includes crowded places, uh, close contact settings, as well as confined and enclosed spaces. On top of that, hand washing, uh, use of hand sanitizers are really routine and wearing of masks uh, is also common. Now, the what else is common in this new normal is also uh, testing, testing for uh, the presence of the COVID-19 virus. So as many of us are already aware, uh, PCR, polymerase chain reaction, is regarded as the gold standard for testing uh, simply because of its very high sensitivity and specificity in detecting the viral RNA. Um, typically, uh, these tests are run in centralized laboratories, and it could be taking about a day to three days before results actually comes back from the laboratory. Now, with as the pandemic continues to evolve, there has also been increased uh, recognition of other types of testing, including professional use rapid antigen tests, um, and these tests are typically much faster in terms of providing a result on the spot near the patient. Uh, however, the sensitivity will be a trade-off uh, as compared to that of PCR. But they are still typically regarded as very sensi uh, uh, fairly sensitive and therefore as considered as a very good alternative when PCR is not available for testing of infection. 
um, the various different international organizations, WHO, the US CDC, European CDC, has then put in place various different recommendations, considerations uh, in terms of uh, guidance on how rapid and antigen tests should be deployed in a professional setting. So these are uh, just an example from uh, the WHO, uh, listing the various use cases, target settings, as well as the performance of a test that is actually going to be effective in such a setting. Um, the rapid antigen tests are recommended to be used in remote setting and uh, where the incidence of the disease is fairly high. Um, it is definitely not recommended where we have very low expected prevalence and the type of testing uh, that's to be used needs to at least achieve 80% sensitivity as well as 97% specificity. Um, positive results are still to be confirmed by PCR and a negative result doesn't remove an individual from the need for quarantine. And that was the professional use uh, rapid antigen test. In March this year, the European CDC actually gave an update with regards to the consideration of using a home-based self-testing for COVID-19 rapid antigen test. Um, they recommend that uh, the self-test can complement, although not replacing, existing testing methods. And this test may actually provide advantage in occupational and educational settings. In times of high prevalence and high pressure on the healthcare system, the advantage of the benefits of having such self-testing would far outweigh the disadvantage of potential underreporting or false positive results. The US CDC has also then made an update uh, in May this year uh, with regards to guidance for self-testing. That if the test is negative, uh, that the individual should consider retesting every two to three days. And if the, uh, the individual is symptomatic, um, they would still have to be quarantined to prevent exposure to uh, and spread further spreading of the disease. If the result is positive, of course, uh, you seek medical attention immediately to get the re relevant treatment. So basically the, the bottom line is uh, from World Health Organization and various different international organizations, uh, the simple message to test, test and test. And the home-based testing can be a very powerful tool in terms of fighting the pandemic. And it is particularly useful uh, in close proximity settings, such as occupational or educational institutions. And if we were to look in terms of how the test is, to, is being processed, and this is a comparison again with the laboratory-based testing, a point of care professional testing, as well as that of a home-based testing. And this was also mentioned by uh, Dr. Lee earlier, that the logistics very much simplifies when you're looking at a home-based testing. Essentially, you no longer have to wait one to three days for results, and you can even essentially cut out the uh, deployment of healthcare professionals, and hence they, they could be better uh, deployed into more uh, urgent uh, needs for their expertise. If here are some of the suggestions of when and where do we want to consider using of the COVID-19 rapid antigen self-test. One, it's uh, when there is actually frequent testing of an individual which is at risk of exposure. For example, um, in Singapore, uh, food and beverage um, establishment staff or um, say massage parlors or facial saloon workers where the mask of the individuals needs to be removed during service, um, the, the staff are actually recommended to have uh, testing every two weeks and the also essential uh, workers like uh, delivery drivers, transportation staff are also frequently tested. And hence, uh, it is going to be added convenience uh, if there is actually a, a possibility to use home-based testing rather than for the need to travel to a healthcare institution every time uh, frequently for the test. The other possibility would also be when we are looking into protecting our loved ones. Right, where there are individuals who may be uh, not suitable for vaccination or who are more vulnerable to, uh, to the virus, like our elderly or uh, young children. And um, having uh, um, reassurance testing for us individuals before we visit or come into proximity with our loved ones 
would actually be our way of also protecting them. Of course, there is also a possibility of uh, using the test for reassurance testing, uh, where an individual may have mild symptoms, and we really want to be sure that uh, you are not uh, infected uh, by the virus. Um, I would say certain individuals uh, who may have visited uh, uh, nightlife establishments within Singapore uh, currently could be exactly looking into get, getting some of this reassurance. And lastly, there is a potential use in terms of access control where individuals should be tested negative uh, at the uh, gate before entering a um, arena for say sports or a concert environment. And this is really to prevent uh, spread within this enclosed environment uh, during the event. I will then uh, switch gears a little bit now to talk about what are the considerations and needs uh, for this test to be effective. So first of all, the test certainly needs to have a relatively good performance in terms of good sensitivity and specificity, right? Um, this, is re this is lowering the risk of false negative results and therefore uh, releasing more of uh, infected patients into the community and also uh, not to have raised any false alarms uh, when individuals were then uh, be, be um, try to say, wasting uh, healthcare uh, resources uh, in getting treatment when they're actually not having the disease. So as you recall from my earlier comment, the WHO recommends that uh, sensitivity needs to be at least 80% and specificity needs to be at least 97% for a home-based test to be effective. Uh, in what is also needed uh, for a home-based test is of course the ease of use of this test, right? the patient or the individual basically needs to perform the test by themselves. So uh, drawing of the sample from the nasal uh, uh, is definitely much more convenient or possible compared to a nasal pharyngeal swab typically used in a professional setting. The remaining of the steps of the test should also be as simple to use and also results to be reported within a relatively short time, say 15 to 30 minutes. Um, in Singapore, for example, uh, while well, we have um, home-based uh, uh, testing that's to be sold readily over the counter uh, that do not need a prescription. However, it is still common practice that various pharmacies still provide training and education uh, to the uh, individuals who are actually purchasing such tests in the pharmacies so that they are able to perform the test effectively and accurately at home. Lastly, uh, would be a further consideration um, that with regards to how do we actually report the results, right? It, in fact, because it's home-based uh, testing, it is typically down to the honesty, uh, integrity of the individual to actually uh, uh, report uh, the test results uh, um, promptly. Uh, if there is an actual um, digital solution that provides this convenience of capturing the results, and then uh, after performing of the test, and then potentially sending the result off to a cloud-based database uh, where it can be securely and effectively stored. And then it can be put down by uh, various different uh, regulators or access control uh, um, people to, to actually ensure that uh, we, do, we provide access then for the individual as they want to go back to school, go back to work, or to uh, uh, join any mass event um, and so this is actually a way to help with the convenience and of course the integrity of all the results reporting. I would now also switch gears a little bit then to talk a little bit about uh, the various different uh, landscape uh, across the APEC region with regards to a regulatory environment. We do have the situation, for example, in certain markets. And here I'm pulling out an example from Australia. Where we, say that, where we see that rapid antigen tests, even in a professional setting, has not been widely adopted. And this is despite uh, expert opinion repeatedly calling for the use of rapid antigen tests. The TGA uh, in Australia basically uh, explains that there is a, a low prevalence of the disease uh, in the uh, country at the moment, and hence the need to deploy a rapid antigen test may not be necessary. Now, uh, of course, as we understand uh, that in the last couple of days, we have seen uh, an increased uh, prevalence of the disease in Sydney. So whether uh, the TGA will take a different stand 
that is something that uh, we will have to uh, wait and see. There are also uh, various different countries, authorities who have actually not made specific uh, uh, claims in terms of whether home-based testing has been allowed or not, right? So we have seen then uh, this test uh, finding themselves onto uh, the shelves of pharmacies, supermarkets, and also online platforms, Facebook, uh, social media, uh, and some even using celebrities to promote uh, this home-based testing. Um, the governments have not made uh, a clear stand as to whether these tests are allowed or not, but these tests are fairly much recognized as if it's a home-based consumer product and therefore uh, uh, falling under the radar. We also have uh, a third type of uh, situation across APEC, uh, and here I'm pulling up an example from Singapore. Uh, we know that Taiwan is very much the same, where the government and regulatory bas basically makes very clear stand that rapid antigen home-based testing it's allowed and, and they have specifically curated and, and approved uh, certain brands of testing. And they also put together recommendations as to what, to, uh, what an individual should do uh, when the test is uh, found to be positive. And this provides a very well controlled environment and awareness and education to the general public on the use of home-based testing. And so we believe that uh, this will certainly help in the fight against pandemic uh, in especially this market. So in summary, uh, I just want to close us off with uh, just uh, repeating uh, some of the key messages that I was uh, sharing. One is that the various different international organizations such as WHO, CDC, European CDC basically recognizes that uh, the COVID-19 rapid antigen uh, self-test has a important role to play in fighting the pandemic and the new normal. Uh, we actually uh, would need good performing tests with good sensitivity and specificity, easy to perform tests, as well as tests that potentially be coupled with digital solutions uh, to really aid in uh, uh, easy performance, as well as reporting of the test results for it to be effective. And lastly, there is really at the moment no unified approach towards how uh, home-based uh, rapid antigen self-testing should be uh, adopted and uh, we hope that this, uh, um, as the situation unfolds, that we'll be able to see a more harmonized approach across the region. With that, uh, thank you for your time. And I'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, later in the panel as well as uh, open Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lee. You've really given us a very uh, comprehensive introduction to home-based diagnostics uh, in terms of the uh, international organization's guideline and where and when to use uh, home-based diagnostics. And you've also very kindly introduced experiences from some of the regulatory authorities like Singapore and the Taiwan region of China. And also you've touched upon some of the other scenarios or facility support, let's say digital health solutions to make that home-based diagnosis happen. Thank you very much. I think uh, our first speaker, Dr. Henry Lee has been approached many, many times, but we will definitely leave the opportunity to answer questions later on. So, um, after hearing the Roche Diagnostics perspective on a regional uh, landscape, let's turn our attention to the third speaker, who is also an active player in this field. Uh, let's welcome Wolfel, Dr. Karen Wong. Karen Kahn. Karen Kahn uh, is now the Vice President at Wolfo Biotech. Uh, actually, he, she also holds many academic titles at the same time. She's now a mentor at, the mentor at the Southern University of Science and Technology and visiting professor of Guangdong Food and Drug Vocational College. Uh, in addition to that, she's also very active in industry work. She has many titles in industry committees, for example, Vice President of Laboratory Medicine Branch of China Medical Equipment Association, Group Leader of Smart Medical Equipment Study, and also he, she leads many uh, work around chronic disease management. So a lot of fancy titles. And actually, uh, she will share with us this perspective on home-based diagnostics from the China um, angle. So let's welcome uh, Dr. Karen Kong. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the in, uh, introduction of my, uh, myself. Uh, dear Dr. Lee, Mr. Lee, Madam Alicia, um, good morning. 
and uh, thanks for hosting this webinar. I'm Karen Kang from Wonderful Biotech. We are honored to be among, uh, among you distinguished partners. And so am I uh, happy to be here to share information on the antigen self-test in China. Since the beginning of 2020, COVID-19 has been the focus of the whole world. It has brought a substantial burden on healthcare uh, system around the globe. As we all know, um, earlier diagnosis is a key factor in the fight against uh, and the control of the spread of diseases. So far, the application of an uh, antigen test is increasing and becoming clear after exploration in many countries. Guidelines about antigen uh, rapid tests are issued by the um, Disease Control and Prevention Institution and the international or local health organizations. Currently, many countries in Europe, the USA and Singapore um, have launched antigen self-testing as a further, uh, further step to help combat the um, pandemic. However, China has not officially studied the antigen self-test, although China um, MMPA has approved three manufacturers for the antigen test. Those are for professional use, not um, self-testing. Currently, um, th there is no approved antigen self-testing products on the market. And, uh, uh, no national guideline or instructions about self-test here in China. Um, even for those meant for professional use, the national guideline about COVID-19 diagnosis and treatment um, has not included antigen test as one of the uh, diagnostic um, um, uh, criteria. Next. Uh, however, even though Antigen self-test has not been approved in China. Many Chinese manufacturers have launched the antigen self-test due to the demand from the international market. For example, our company, Wonderful Biotech, has developed two antigen self-testing kits using two sample types. Saliva and nasal swab have obtained the CE and B farm and have been um, distribu uh, distributing this product to Germany, Belgium, um, French, and, uh, and so on. As for self-using uh, self, uh, antigen test, we did a, a comparison study um, with our professional antigen use. The performance is quite similar with positive augment rate of um, 92.8%. 86% and a negative agreement rate of 100%. Mm, the rapid test detects viral proteins such as the M protein of COVID-19. is different from those that detect the genetic material um, of the virus. It has the same efficiency for different variants. Our global uh, evaluation data are being improved. Here are some of the key performance, uh, performance that I would recommend to consider uh, when evaluating the antigen test, whether for um, professional and uh, uh, self-use. Uh, self First, the sensitivity and uh, specificity are among the key things to look out for at Wonderful Biotech. Yeah. Uh, we have several products uh, validation studies in different countries to ensure that our products satisfy the um, standard uh, um, um, requirements for approval. I, um, I would to mention a few validation studies here, such as the one conducted by WHO founder USA um, Pack Genomic Lab. They can also as evidence for product quality. As for self-use antigen test, we did a comparison study with our professional use antigen test um, and observed that the performance uh, was similar. 
Another point I would like to point out is for the uh, variant detection ability. The variant detection ability is also a very important factor to um, consider in the selection of antigen self-testing kits. Uh, even though uh, China still doesn't have any um, uh, official um, um, guidelines for antigen testing, we agree, uh, we agree with ECDC as well as um, other mainstream health institutions and organizations that um, the antigen test would serve as a be a great addition, but not a total replacement of other testing methods for COVID-19. Um, in com uh, combination with the actual uh, COVID-19 situation in China, we think antigen self-testing can play a, a very important role, uh, a key role in following um, scenarios like uh, high-risk uh, communi uh, communities, particular places, uh, places like entry and exit port uh, hotels and so on. A patient can buy the test, um, um, swab their nerves, run the test and uh, find out the results in as late as uh, 15 minutes. It can diver um, diversify the diagnostic methods uh, and has its unique and uh, crucial value in the um, fight against the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The advantage of self-testing is very clear. So China uh, is having some changes due to important cases, the Delta uh, variant. There was rising tension in Guangzhou in recent weeks. During the period, the third version of the expert uh, con uh, consensus about uh, pediatric uh, COVID-19 prevention and uh, treatment had been updated to include the antigen test for quick di uh, diagnosis. Guangzhou uh, Healthcare Commission has uh, issued the um, policy regarding the antigen rapid test application so far, antigen test has been applied in multiple scenarios. Um, and as a Chinese POCT manufacturer, uh, we are also act, uh, active exploring the feasibility and the application of antigen self-test in these scenarios. We are facing many challenges for antigen self-test in China. The application scenarios and models should be further explored in order to have a more uh, standardized system. I posted two questions uh, question here. First the question is, how do we instruct and manage the antigen self-test users? Uh, since they are doing it at home by themselves, a lot of questions can pop up. Uh, so we need an instruction. We need to know what the next step is. For this, an online instruction app could be designed and applied. Um, the user can follow the instruction displayed on the tab uh, to do the test. If they encounter any questions, the app can direct the, uh, the user to a professional who can help with the specific, uh, uh, specific uh, question. Uh, then, uh, um, how do we collect and manage users' information and the test results? When the user uh, register the information and knows the results, then what? What does the result mean? What, what can I do with it? How could it help in the control of the pandemic? For this concern, we have um, developed in an information management system. Um, the user only need, uh, needs to uh, register the per uh, personal information before the test and uh, 
then uh, follow the instruction to finish the test, up, uh, upload the results to the system. The system uh, um, automatically co uh, connected with uh, authorities. Uh, the results uh, also can, uh, can be considered as one of the factors to issue the online health code, which could um, uh, serve as a gate pass to enter work and uh, um, uh, enter entertainment places. In the future, we, uh, we may actually enter the phase, um, live with COVID, uh, based on the feedback, uh, feedback from a few exploration of the antigen testing in China, without any doubt, self-test uh, can play a very important or key uh, role in pandemic prevention and control. Uh, however, to finish that, uh, there are some key steps we need to focus on. Uh, first, the self-test products should pass the clinical validation and approved by NMPA. Uh, number two, uh, relevant guideline, uh, guidelines issued by um, authorities for instruction their use. Um, the third, um, a standardized platform and system should be developed for antigen self-test, ensure the safe and uh, uh, um, safe and uh, correct operation and uh, efficient data analysis and, um, and uh, management. Um, many uncertain factors are um, hidden virus, but one thing is for, uh, for sure, the government um, uh, health, uh, health in, um, institutions and uh, relevant associations and uh, industry should work together to make this come true and uh, um, bring the pandemic prevent and control efforts to the next uh, next level. Yeah. Um, this is all time uh, we allow me to share with you today. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Dr. Kam. I think you raised a very important um, issue of uh, setting up an ecosystem for all the industry players and uh, stakeholders to work together. You've also mentioned the China perspective, and I uh, assume that China has taken early steps to control and manage the COVID-19. So there's not much use of self-testing uh, in China yet. However, I think with uh, this uh, advanced uh, or much quicker or efficient way of testing, it will be uh, more popular within the region because after all, this is for the benefit of the consumers and users. And um, now I think I have seen a lot of questions uh, placed in the chat box. We uh, encourage, if we miss anything, we encourage um, the questions to be directed to uh, the panelists and speakers directly. And we will also uh, collect the questions afterwards if we don't have time to, uh, if the speakers don't have time to respond, we will share with them one by one. And, and um, on behalf of the audience, because we have collected a few questions in advance, I'll just uh, uh, you know ask one question on behalf of the audience. So I see one common issue uh, question which is directed to all speakers, which says, dear speakers, do you see any new and upcoming non and <coughs> COVID home testing kits? How is the uptake of home testing kits in Southeast Asian market and Asia Pacific? And what are the factors driving the uptake of these solutions? So maybe uh, we can first start from Dr. Henry, maybe Dr. Henry, you can you know, give us some insight on how the industry could better seize upon such an opportunity in Asia Pacific. Okay. <clears throat> so of course, I um, mean, uh, the um, antigen-based testing and uh, right now, and you know, I think uh, it's um, uh, probably as good as it get and the uh, US and the last uh, three, uh, companies' uh, products, they all have um, the indication for zero testing. So it's um, within three days, you'll get um, uh, a test again. The, the two tests need to be uh, 24 hour apart, ideally 36 hour or longer. So and uh, that's uh, give you a better uh, coverage uh, for, so to speak. 
So as of for the new tests uh, potentially being available, I think uh, there are, I think uh, in China and uh, I, I see there are, um, I work with uh, some other companies so they are trying to develop uh, this, um, um, the new nuclear IC base as they potentially can be used at home. And the US has two companies that have those um, testing kits um, and uh, it's been uh, used and um, one of them easily available in CVS uh, patients use that. So of course, uh, in terms of what's the driving force and of course, uh, it uh, depends on the, uh, the local pay people's uh, urgency, how much they feel uh, it's a danger for to them and uh, of course, the vaccine rate, the the prevalence or or new cases, uh, you know, U.S. Even though you, uh, there are uh, significant proportion of people are vaccinated, we still have ten thousand case new cases every day, and uh, so it's um, the danger is still there. And um, uh, p um, pediatric population, young kids. Uh, are still not uh, vaccinated, so school still have concern. And uh, if the parents uh, have concern, rather than take them to to doctors, uh, they probably want to uh, get the testing quickly and uh, at home. And also a lot of a uh, big cooperation, and uh, and uh, they encourage people to come back to work, but then. Um, and uh, send them to go to uh, be tested and uh, get a result the next day you know, pretty routine and uh, still cannot uh, meet the demand uh, like most people want to know right right now. Uh, and so so that's uh, the huge um, uh, advantage for home testing here. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, Mr. Lee, perhaps you can also share with us some of your understandings and observations. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier in, in my uh, session that uh, typically we see very diverse uh, shall I say implementation various uh, markets across Asia Pacific, right? Um, in Singapore and Taiwan, uh, there is very clear uh, regulations uh, in place in terms of which are the home-based testing that are allowed, uh, how they are to be used, how they are to be deployed uh, in terms of education to the public, in terms of what to do when you have a positive result or you have a negative result. And hence, these markets are really uh, the ones where, where we will see uh, the most uptake at the moment, right? And of course, this may also uh, change uh, and evolve over time as various different authorities may then uh, be more aligned as we also could consider in the future where we have uh, perhaps the opening of, of travel. And so across different markets, we certainly need to consider uh, a similar recognition of what is, uh, what is allowed and what is not and what actually uh, would be um, minimizing the risk for the various different uh, countries and, and geographics. So um, I, I would uh, suggest that uh, the, one of this hurdle is also how do patients uh, actually report the results uh, effectively and, and accurately, uh, and whether these results are also accessible by various authorities as we move across geographic regions um, so, so again, coming back to the potential proposal of a harmonized digital solution uh, with central cloud, cloud storage of the uh, um, data uh, could actually help uh, in facilitating this uh, further uptake of home-based testing across various markets, could be well-regulated, uh, such that they are also not abused or uh, um, yeah, misused. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lee. I think you raised uh, rightly that regional harmonization on this issue is perhaps needed. We may have a very high level understanding of that, but down to earth, how to implement yeah. that underground is really an issue that we can look at. And perhaps um, Dr. Karen, you would like to share with us your observations and understandings? about 
the question, um, do you see any new and upcoming non-antigen COVID home testing kits? How is the uptake of home testing kits in Southeast Asia and APEC alike? Or could you share with us your understanding from the welfare perspective of looking at regional collaboration? 您可以给我们分享一下就是关于您对这个亚太区域的这些市场是怎么看的然后呢是否有其他的更便于这个家庭自测的这种产品的出现嗯好我用中文来回应吧可能会嗯哼呃在嗯嗯怎么说因为这是
do we uh, instruct the users to judge? I'm assuming the question is with regards to how does uh, the, the user basically uh, perform and interpret the results of the test, reading of uh, the, the lines uh, on the test strips. Uh, I think, as I mentioned also in certain markets, uh, even when the kits are over the counter, and doesn't require prescription, pharmacies are still deployed to actually train and educate uh, the individuals who are purchasing the kit on how to perform and read uh, the test results. And I believe many of us may already be familiar with how to read a pregnancy home kit, uh, where one line means not pregnant, two line means pregnant. I guess it's the same application here with uh, reading of the results of the test kit. And, and hence, sorry, I was a little bit, uh, uh, yeah laughing at the, the, yeah. the interpretation. Thank I'm you, Mr. Lee. Uh, towards the end of the chat box, I see that uh, there's a comment that uh, it should be more widely used in Africa. Uh, definitely, I think that's what the industry can do together uh, with the international organizations and uh, experts from the, from, from the academic, academic field. I think it's what um, both from the China side Wofo and from the regional perspective, Roche can do together and together with APEPMED uh, to uh, have this kind of belt and rope collaboration and access to better um, health solutions. So uh, because of the time constraint, uh, even though we have very rich discussion today, which I have actually learned a lot, we have to call it a day. As we move into this new normal of COVID-19 management, self-testing in home settings seems to be an irreversible trend. For us in the industry, it's really about being open enough to embrace opportunities, talk about challenges, and pave out a way of diversified and flexible collaboration. We at APEMED are also delighted to continue being uh, this kind of bridge to you uh, where these new ideas and the new collaboration opportunities can be flourished and from here. We encourage you to stay tuned to this topic and for any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at APEMED or, or me. I'm your moderator, Alicia, and please feel free to contact our panelists who have given us a really good and insightful discussion today. I'd like to thank you uh, for all the panelists, speakers, and audience from the floor. We especially like to thank um, our partners Turner, Wolfo, and Roche Diagnostics here today. Thank you very much uh, again and have a nice day. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.